Doc, I'm so tired. It seems like I can't stay awake during the daytime. What's wrong with me? Welcome back to the channel. It's time to get a little bit more understanding with Dr. Daryl Ellis. One of the topics that has come up in, in questions and answers, both in the community as well as in the YouTube community, is fatigue. We want to discuss the three most common causes of fatigue. It may surprise you how simple and straightforward the solutions really are. Number one, dehydration. Most people do not drink enough water. One of the first and early symptoms of dehydration is fatigue. What do we do when we feel tired? Well, we go to a caffeinated drink. We either get an energy drink, a monster drink, drink some coffee, drink some tea. That's high in caffeine that gives us that emergency boost. What happens when you drink caffeine? You urinate more and you become more dehydrated. So you're actually propagating the process of fatigue by trying to take stimulants to overcome the fatigue. When you're starting to feel tired, when you notice that your energy just doesn't last through the day, take a look at how much water you're actually drinking. And conversely, take a look at how much caffeine you're drinking. Experts recommend that for every caffeinated drink you drink, you should drink three glasses of water to replace the fluids that you lose from that caffeine. At baseline, most of us should be drinking six to eight glasses of water a day. And if you're a person who exercises and you lose a lot of fluid by insensible loss, by working outdoors in the heat or exercising regularly, then you may want to increase that by about 25%. And it should be more like eight to 10 glasses of water a day. Think about it. It's a simple solution to a very common problem. The second most common cause of fatigue is poor sleep habits. Most of us do not get adequate sleep during the course of a night. In many cases, Four to six hours is what many people get who are gainfully employed. They're staying up late at night to finish the work that they didn't get done while they were in the office, and they're having to get up early in the morning to make it to the office on time for the next day's work. And as a result, you find yourself dragging throughout the day. The other thing that can be affected during sleep is undiagnosed sleep apnea. Many times we think we're getting good night's sleep, but if we've got undiagnosed obstructive sleep apnea, Throughout the night, as you're approaching that level of sleep that allows your body to really get rest, you're waking yourself up to get a breath because you're stopping breathing. Your body has a mechanism that's built into it that if you stop breathing, as your oxygen levels drop, it'll send a signal to your brain to wake you up to take a breath. But that wake up is not enough for you actually to reach full consciousness. So you're not even aware that it's happening. Most people who come to my office and we diagnose them with sleep apnea, their complaint is, I'm just exhausted during the daytime. To exhausted to the point where if I sit still for more than a couple of minutes, I'll not often fall asleep wherever I am. Sometimes they fall asleep at stoplights while they're driving. Sometimes they'll sit in our waiting room and fall asleep. Sometimes they'll be in the exam room and I'll come in and I'll hear loud snoring. And their first complaint is, I just am so tired all the time. We send them for a sleep study. We find that they've got sleep apnea. We initiate the appropriate interventions and they're gain, they gain their energy level back. They're able to be much more productive and actually they're in a much better mood and decrease risk of a lot of other potential health risks. Think about it. If you notice that you're really fatigued during the daytime and you have a partner you sleep with, ask them if they've noticed you snoring excessively or having frequent awakening where you're gasping for air. Those can be very early signs of a potentially life-threatening illness, sleep apnea. The third most common cause of fatigue is one that more commonly affects women than affects men, and that's vitamin D deficiency. We especially see that in African-American women. It's a very common cause. A lot of times, again, we'll do an extensive workup, particularly in reproductive age women, looking for causes like anemia, thyroid disease, those kind of things, and many times physicians will miss out on the opportunity to catch a very easily reversible cause, which is vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D deficiency not only can cause fatigue, which is one of the early symptoms of, of that disorder, but it also can lead to problems with respect to bone loss, early problems with your anterior pituitary gland, as well as problems with osteoporosis and osteopenia later on in life, increasing your risk for bone fractures, and injury and uh, morbidity later on in life. So if you're tired, go see your physician. Recommend to them that they check your vitamin D levels 
and you may have a very easily reversible cause making you feel better and being a better part of you. Don't forget, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and touch that bell notification. We're gonna be rolling out a lot of new content as we go forward. We're building momentum on this channel and we wanna keep that momentum going. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you like the content, please go ahead and subscribe. It helps us with our YouTube algorithm and it helps give us content to continue to be able to bring out more information that's useful and beneficial to you. God bless.